Well, good day, Max there again. Welcome back to the shop. So, first off, just like to uh, thank everybody, all my subscribers, because yeah, we've crossed over the 10,000 subscriber mark. So that's um, that's a big thing for my little channel. So onwards and upwards. <laughs> now, our last video was oh, we were looking at that Vivor drill press, and then previous to that. Uh, we were looking at the pinion gear that we have to cut for the carriage for the JFMT lathe. Now that has turned into a right can of worms, so we'll take a look where we're at with that. And I have to do a little job, a little, well, we have to make a guard for the wheel, for the grinding wheel, for our tool and cutter grinder, as I need to use that but I do not want to use it without a guard, just in case. A lot of people do, I <clears throat> don't, all right, I have in the past used it, and uh, I'm not gonna push my luck. So I'm gonna make a guard for that. This lathe here, I need to get the electrician in and run some temporary power to it because I have a thread to cut and my small lathe won't cut that pitch. And of course the JFMT isn't ready yet, but this will do it. So we need to have a bit of a quick clean up on this machine and so we can carry out that job. Okay, so I think we'll head over. Let's have a look and just fill you in the picture with this pinion gear first. And then we'll look at the tool and cutter grinder for the guard we have to make. Right, so I'll just briefly fill you in on where we're at with our um, new shaft and our pinion gear that we have to cut so I think I said in a previous video I had to get a cutter to cut the teeth and I just went by what was in the parts book for the machine and, and it stated that this is a, a 2.5 millimeter module and I, I went and ordered the cutter which is the number one cutter to cut module 2.5 12 um, teeth as there's 12 teeth on this pinion and I think we explained in previous video it's a country mile away it's nowhere near it so then I thought maybe it's 10 dp so we did um I did a lot of calculations and worked out a lot of um, info and 10 dp and 2.5 modules are quite close that with the for a diametrical pitch the your cutter numbers run opposite to module so this is a number eight cutter to cut 10 diametrical pitch on a 12 tooth gear and likewise it's a country mile away so I've got here a module, this is the number one cutter, module number two. Now when I set that in there, it's very, it's, it's close enough. It sits really good, but the cutter goes in too far. And then I also had, was wondering why the gear didn't come up to a standard OD as for a, a 12th, uh, 12 tooth pinion for either 10 DP or module 2.5. So I did some further digging around on that. And what I came up with when I was going through these calculations and that, there's a such a thing called an undercut and these a lot of small pinions have an undercut bigger gears generally no um, an undercut or just it's quite a crude drawing here if you imagine that's your standard envelope profile gear tooth well an undercut is actually has the the root of the teeth undercut now that's to provide clearance 
for the mating gear for the the tip of the tooth so it doesn't bind in the in the root here and you don't get like a, a point contact so what they do is they relieve or they undercut the root now to get round undercutting so you don't have to undercut a small tooth pinion gear what they do is they increase the pitch diameter and the outside diameter now that's known as a um, positive profile shift <coughs> oh, excuse me and there's a lot of calculations involved in it and they're very long-winded <laughs> so that explains why our OD is different our actual profile has changed so I'm thinking when a positive profile shift is done on a pinion gear it changes considerably the shape of the tooth as the whole lot sort of coming outwards to a bigger diameter so no problem there now all this means is we have to do when we cut the gear we cut as deep as we can possibly with this module number two because it is holding the correct profile at the root or at the dedendum side and when we go to touch up the addendum which is your the top half of the tooth we have to offset so we have to we'll be in the middle we'll have to offset the center and it'll also be a rotational offset that we'll do in the indexing head so we'll cover all that and how we'll go further in depth on that when we go to cut our gear blank but like i say it's quite involved and I even did a measurement on our rack across 10 teeth. So the module 2.5, the pitch of a 2.5 gear, times 10 is 78.54. And that's what our rack is measuring up. A number 10 diametrical pitch uh, measured across 10 teeth should be 79.8 millimetres. And... There's not a great deal in it, but there is some in it, and ours measured up still to 78.54. So at the end of the day, the book was correct about the 2.5 module um, system, and I'm sure it's just due to this positive profile shift to eliminate the need for undercutting on the gear, hence the large diameter, it has affected the tooth profile so yeah we can either do the our offset method the other method we can do is run through with this uh, number two dp cutter and then profile grind a piece of high speed steel and single point the finished profile but we'll cover that bridge when we come to it hopefully uh in the next video as i want to get this up and running well, it might be the video after the next video. We'll see how we go. Anyway, that's where we're at with this gear. And it's, it's, it's turned into quite a can of worms. It's not a standard profile gear. All right, let's head to our tool and cutter grinder. And we'll go through what our project is there. Right, our tool and cutter grinder. Now... I have used this on occasions without a guard and that finishes here um, if one of these wheels explodes it may be due to a fault in the wheel or you crash your, your tool into it um, you've only got you're only born with one set of eyes and one face and the chances of you coming out of it without damage are very slim so we're going to pull up stumps as I need to use this machine to grind a couple of tools. And we're going to put a guard on this wheel. Now a guard on a tool and cutter grinder um, 
um, can be a quite a restrictive thing for getting your, your, your workpiece into grind and provision. You could go the CBM route with a CBM wheel and not so critical then. So what I propose to do, it has just here a point to mount, or I assume it's to mount a guard, or well, we're going to mount our guard off it. And I found this in my scrap pile, so our guard will go on such. But instead of using this piece of round bar, I've got some 5.8 diameter square, 16 millimeter square bar here. So I'll machine down a half inch step so it will fit into the bore here. And having a square area makes it a lot easier to build off. So what we so our guard will mount there, but we'll make it in such a way that it can be pivoted forward. That way if the wheel lets go unprotected and needs to be height fully adjustable and be able to pivot. So not as not to be too restrictive in what we need to grind. Saying that too, a lot of what you grind to to get your clearance angles is above center on a tool and cutter grinder. So you do have to have a fair bit of clearance around there. And it has to be able to pivot and pivot forward like that. Just so it's in your line of sight between your eyes and the wheel. But you can still see underneath it to still see the tool that you're grinding. That's the plan. So we'll get a piece of this chopped off. We'll turn the end down. And we'll come back and dream up some sort of plan for our pivot system. Don't mess with grinding wheels, you know, you only, there's no second chances. Okay, so, so we're just using the lines in our four jaw chuck on the body to centralize our part. That's what they're there for. So for all intensive purposes that will bring us in close enough. Okay. So you can see there we've only just taken a little bit off the corners. It's all looking pretty even. So you know we're centralized enough. It's not worth putting an indicator on it and indicating it in for what it has to do. It's only a shaft to hold a wheel guard. So we just want to bring it down to half an inch diameter.
Oh yeah, still got a bit to go before we get round. <clears throat> Hundred and sixty five thousand to go. Slow that feed down because that feed was way too heavy. Just over 50 thou to go, and we'll bring our revs up too because we're coming into a finishing cut. Eighteen thou should uh, get us there. Where we need to be. Right, we'll put this back in our 
tool and cutter grinder and we'll come up with our plan on how we're going to attach our guard it's only a bit of um, old soft mild steel um, bar this uh, we'll just clean out the thread for the locking bolt it's a uh, 5 16th Whitworth being an old Australian um, Hercus cut, um, tool and cutter grinder this I think we'll find all the threads will be Whitworth So our shaft fits in, we'll put a locking bolt in, um, I don't have any 5 16 Whitworth locking bolts but 5 16 UNC will do the same, will do the job. So what I need to do now <coughs> I can see this copying a lot of damage through this screw so I might just go duck over to Hong Fuck Wong we'll just put a, uh, a flat down it for something for the screw to tighten up onto So that will give us a, a flat surface for the a locking bolt to pull up on. Hey, if you watch um, John from over in Scotland, John's workshop, he's got a, a similar mill, 7045 to my one. Probably the same country of origin. And he has had a problem when he pushes on here, pulls or pushes with it flexing. Now, He's had that problem since new and I had a similar issue with this one so he was going to check to see if it was in this area or the column base and I'll, the problem John's problem I'd say may be a similar one to mine um, in this area here where the head swivels they're not flat so you have a, a pinch bolt either side similar to a lathe compound slide and what happens you pinch these up and after a time the casting warps and it gives this rocking motion on your head and it's possible that that's the same problem that John's got um, I did a, um, a minor correction job on this years ago I can't remember what I did now but I do I would like to actually pull this apart in the future and re redo all of this and make it uh, user friendly somehow <laughs> all right back to our job at hand i know i can't wait to get this thing fired up should be a handy machine to have around i mean mind you all right for doing little flat surfaces i only got this for doing keyways and just for a toy <laughs> we'll have to show rust and ox that a milling machine will mow metal far quicker than these things we'll put that we'll put that one to bed finally right then she goes just give it a jiggle to centralize it and nip up our locking bolt i might have to shorten this up 
as it's uh yeah interfering with our wheel all right so part a of the thing's done so let's go to the next part how we're going to configure our guard and still leave enough clearance to fit the wheel so i might have to just shorten this up a, a little bit yet actually what i what i think i'll do is i might cut this through here and drill a tap a hole in this half and on our piece left over we'll just drill a clearance hole then this can bolt on top of that with a bolt and it gives us one more area of uh, adjustment so let me cut these drill and tap the holes then we'll come back right let's see what we've got so we've got a hole drilled and tapped in there so if we put so this gives us a little bit of leeway in and out. So we'll have our guard sitting over here, which has to be adjustable that way. And we'll make this adjustable this way as well. I was going to put a slot in here, but I don't think we need it as we've got the adjustment here. I might, I might just put a, uh, like a 20 millimeter long slot in anyway, just to give us that bit more flexibility. Let's head to the bridge port. Just using my finger to tap it down flush. That's it. Right, we'll get an end mill and we'll take the centre out. Right, we'll just pack away and clean up the gaps in between the holes with the end mill. That's a centre cutting end mill. Too. Okay, right, so we'll get this D bird and we'll go and have a, a fit up. Right, so we have our slot cut in, just gives us a bit more leeway with adjustment. Um, I've just rounded the, the corners off just with a corner rounding um, end mill. So this part goes into here. As I said we've got adjustment in and out here as well and the flat locates it stops the shaft getting all uh, messed up this screws into here now what I was thinking our guard has to mount on top and I also want it so it pivots. So I'll probably weld a block onto here, sort of something a bit wider. Put a center bolt in, central bolt, and that will allow that to pivot. I might even slot that as well so it can go in and out and pivot around. That way, Allowing it to pivot, if I can, I can angle the, the guard. If I'm only using this part of the wheel, which is the only part I should be using, it gives full protection on the other side of the wheel. So I think I'll go with that idea. I'll weld a piece of metal on here and we'll slot that. 
once that's done I think I'll cut a piece out and just a stiffener for around the inside here we'll see okay so of course we're making this up as we go along there's no planning here whatsoever <laughs> except for five minutes of me thinking in between camera shots so I've cut a slot in this piece cut out a little block with a hole drilled and tapped in and that's going where our guard will mount to so this will go on here of course this will allow the guard a bit more travel in and out and also a bit of rotational movement now I did want to be able to rotate the guard that way as well but it's looking like that's not gonna work out so uh, between the articulations here and back here that will give us our angled um, well the desired effect of the angle that we need so I'll go now I think I'll go and just put a couple of tacks on this just to tack this guard onto this block and we'll come back for another fit up so a couple of tack welds on it <laughs> we'll see what we come up with so now I can set that there in a position like that and that gives me a good open face of the wheel I can use and the rest of the wheel is guarded so I think we're on the right track um, time will tell with different um, tools that have to be ground but I, it's, it's an easy process just to make up different guards now I have this mounting system so what I did use was 5 16th bolts all the same so I just need uh, one half inch spanner to do my adjustments so what I'll do now I think I will we'll run a weld um, down the edges there possibly along the bottom they won't need I think just down the two edges will be fine and we'll cut out a backing piece so I'll go and cut out a backing piece tack it up and uh, bring you back okay that's the uh, guard welded up so we've got our back covering now And I didn't feel there was a need to weld across the top. So we'll give that a quick clean up. It won't, name, uh, won't take much. And then we'll go and have a, a fit up. Well, there we go. I think that will uh, do the job. So we have some coverage at the rear. We've got a lot of adjustment options with the way it all mounts. We have it slightly sloping down as we wanted. So while we're standing on the front of the machine, if anything happens to the wheel, the idea is it's gonna come up and go that way instead of towards me here. Um, we just angled the front away for a bit of extra clearance. Now, um, the wheel rotation is actually this way I thought at first it was the other way but it's not it is this way so we've got plenty of clearance to get in there for tool grinding and as I say with different types of wheels um, we can either make a new guard or see how this one fits at least we don't have to change all our mounting so to make a new guard to suit different types of wheels that this one won't cover I don't think it's going to be a big issue well it's certainly a lot less of an issue than if you have a wheel um, explode on you 
So yeah, I think we, as far as that's concerned, we're good to go. What I will do is make use of the stud down here. Um, and it's just something you'll knock up off camera. It'll just be an arm that comes out to hold the suction pipe for the vacuum cleaner just to keep check of all of the, the grinding dust as these things do tend to emit a fair bit and also carbide dust you do not want to be breathing um, that stuff in so yeah so yeah the old Hercus tool and cutter grinder she's slowly well, will slowly get it knocked into shape might even give it a coat of paint um, <clears throat> I do have to make a new electrical control box for it and hook it back up to three phase this is, is not the uh, original motor the original motor is a three phase and once we've got this running back on three phase I have a, um, a rotating head that goes on here also for like yeah cylindrical type work as well um, this motor here is the original three phase motor off the grinder so I'll do a set of bearings in this and we'll get this mounted back up in its original spot. So this is the rotating attachment for this tool and cutter grinder. You say you can grind between centers and this is the uh, spring-loaded tailstock center for it. And you'll if you've been a viewer of the channel for a while you'll recall this thing here and this is will also be used on the grinder and I think we're up to making the um, adjustable tooth rest which uh, I haven't finished yet so yeah we still have to make a lot of tooling for this grinder as it we just it's unavailable to us over here so I'll have to get into this thing too I've just had the covers off um, and looking into uh, powering it up as I need it running PDQ regardless of its condition so I'll run this off a temporary power lead it's only got to do one well one thread we have to cut in it which it will handle it no problem I hope well it, will, it can do the thread but I'll get it powered up and just make sure everything's functioning okay there and just have to make a little handle uh, for the cross slide interesting enough when I pulled the cover off um, well, there it is there <laughs> dead mouse was sitting uh, in between two of the uh, power terminals it must have jumped on there and fried itself <laughs> so yes um, we shall see this running um, yeah, well very shortly and the eagle eyed amongst us will look and, and say oh, the workshop things look in a different spot uh, yes they do we've had a major uh, reshuffle of course this end here with the JFMT and all this this all stays the same the, the, our smaller lathe which we generally use is still the same now we had to make room to get the uh, Dean Smith and Grace into position here. So this is where the horizontal borer previously was, which is now just shunted down a bit further. The welding area is still the same. Uh, the grinders are now over the other side of the shop. Bright out there, nice day out there, beautiful day outside. Winter's over at last. Um, yeah big milling machines now over here it's actually given us it seems to have opened up um, a bit of extra room in the shop Bridgeport little Hong Fuck Wong Herbert and um, our shaper so once I get this power lead this temporary power lead made up which I'll do next week um, there's no reason why we can't give a couple of these machines a test run and of course our plan was originally to put a uh, pole mounted crane in the middle here 
and at this stage that's we are still going to do that and that will service these this area here the rest of the machines um, I can reach quite easily with my um, yes uh, a gantry crane over there which I've got two of those uh, the big machines are quite accessible to the doorway so anything big has to go in them it's not going to be a problem oh well, yeah I'm afraid yeah that's all we could manage for a video but it's one of those jobs that you have to do so I the as we well shown in the beginning of the video the hold up or where we we're at with the gear for the apron of the JFMT lathe now for me to start to machine that now needs my complete undistracted undivided attention for the day to, to knock that out finish that off it won't take a day but I'm allowing a day um, for it now I haven't been able to do that the last couple of weeks because even this video here has taken probably a week and a half <laughs> stop and start to do we have actually been shifting house so we are, I no longer have to commute to the new shop we have moved and we live here now so that's a good thing <laughs> uh, shifting house is not a good thing um, especially when you've been at a place 30 years and you've got a, a big backlog of jobs you've never done couldn't be bothered doing but now all of a sudden you've got to do them to get your house ready for sale so, um, dealing with that as well but main thing is we we actually live here now in the old house on the property um, this is a nine acre property um, and yeah it's good so I'll be able to spend a lot of time in the shop here coming up once we get we'll catch up on a few jobs here as well so uh, things are looking up things are progressing as they as we had planned and yeah so anyway let's end this here um, cheers thanks for watching and we'll hopefully see you in the next video